This message that I'm going to share with you this morning, I don't believe it's a message that I've thought out that I think you need to hear. I believe that it's actually a prophetic message from God, and I really believe it's something that He needs you to hear. I had another message prepared for you, and I literally had to scrap it because God like literally like arrested me one night, and I could not sleep and just downloaded a whole bunch of scriptures. And so this message is all those scriptures today. Um, and I just really believe strongly it's for me. And it's out of what God is doing in my life. It's also for me to share with you. Because I believe it's for all of us. And it's significant for the time in which we're living in. So I'm going to first read Romans 14 verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he or she who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which may edify one another. I think so many times, you know, we go, we want God's presence, we want heaven here on earth. But what does it actually look like? And the, this is it. It's righteousness, peace, and joy, and edifying one another. That is his kingdom in heaven coming here on earth through the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit operating in each one of us. So it brings me to what I want to speak about today. And it's basically this. God is speaking. He is speaking to each and every single one of us, always. Sometimes we feel like we can't hear him. He's speaking, and he is there, and he is always giving. Always giving. But I do think often where we're living and how we live our lives, we're not listening. We're busy, busy, busy. The world teaches us to be busy. You even find people when they go on holiday, they're lying on a beautiful exotic island And they're sitting there on their cell phone, fully being occupied again, even social media with other people's lives, even if it's not their own life. Always being busy, fully occupied. Jesus says, he who has ears, let him hear. So I started to study the word to hear and to heed. God, what does it actually mean? What does it look like? You know, we always hear, keep hearing, keep hearing, keep hearing the word of God. So I came across the word Shema, and it's a beautiful Hebrew word, and it's it's actually still a Hebrew word um, that very religious Jews um, speak out. It's a prayer that they speak out twice a day, the very religious Jews, and it's and it kind of goes, "Oh, hear Israel." But the word Shema it actually has four kind of definitions to it, and it's to hear, it's to heed. It's to obey, and it's to understand. It's actually a verb. Hearing is actually a verb. Don't just listen to the word of God, the word of truth, and not respond to it. For that, in essence, is of self-deception. So always let the word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live it out, Live out the message you hear. You become like a person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of grace, of liberty, are fascinated and respond to the truth they hear, and they are strengthened by it. There's healing in it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. So I do feel like when we're sitting under this word, there does come a time when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, often it's something for us to do. It's to protect us. It's go a different direction, go a different route, go pray for that person. Lift your head up, child, I love you. He always convicts you of your righteousness. Sometimes you're feeling condemned. The Holy Spirit will come and lift your head up and say, you're righteous, my child. 
or the Holy Spirit will use you to go and tell someone they're righteous and Jesus loves them. Often it requires that, that heeding, that obeying. Because sometimes we can hear that word and go, oh, that's a really good word, that's awesome. Yes, I want the Holy Spirit to move. And then the Holy Spirit says, okay, let's go this direction. Let's go this direction. Oh, whoa. No. That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel comfortable. My flesh doesn't like that. And often our flesh doesn't always understand what the Spirit of God is saying. But the flesh has to submit to what the Holy Spirit is saying and doing in your life. It has to. And that does mean sometimes us obeying the voice of God and the Holy Spirit speaking to us without us even understanding and it fully making sense. I've had that before where I've heard the voice of God say, do this thing, go and pray for that person. I'm like, that person is going to think I'm so crazy and they're going to think I'm weird. And then I like, walk away and I just keep feeling that sense. And I'm like, okay, God, I have no idea why. And if they think I'm weird, they think I'm weird. I'll do it. It's kind of like that. And I do feel like God is speaking to you. It might feel weird in your flesh. It might feel uncomfortable in your flesh. But go, do, receive. Heed his voice. Obey his voice. Obeying is an a legalistic word. It's actually a holy word. It's us following Jesus. It's us living out our lives in response to his grace. My, my two kids, Jonathan and Joel, really, really busy boys, and our house can be super, super chaotic often. And I find myself talking, and no one hears me. Everyone is screaming. One's going that way. One's climbing the Burglar bars, one's falling down the stairs. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm trying to speak. Will you just listen to me? And I'm not trying to ruin their fun. I want them to have more fun than they can even imagine. But I want them to be safe. I don't want them to get hurt. I want them to love each other, not hit each other. <laughs> and I really think it's the same with our Heavenly Father. When He's speaking to us through the Holy Spirit, He's wanting us to have fun. He's wanting us to live the blessed life. But he doesn't want us to get hurt. He doesn't want us to go off track. He wants us to be under the shadow of his wings, in his presence, where there's peace and there's rest. So often we think we know the better way. I want to do this. This is, gonna, this is like a great idea, God. God, just bless it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going there. And God's like, mm -mm. we need to go this way. Jonathan just got an electric scooter for his birthday. And uh, we're always like, put your helmet on, be careful when you're going into the road. And it's not because we want to dampen his fun. We want him to be safe. And choose Bob, I look out the window the other day, no helmet on, drive straight into the road, and he nearly got hit by a car. And I'm just like, isn't it just like that in life? <laughs> we think sometimes we know better. We don't need to listen to God. God, you'll just, you just bless what I want to do because I think I've got a great idea. But our God is our creator. He's the beginning and the end. He sees everything. Why would we want to go ahead of him? We need his voice in our life. We need his directing, his, his wisdom, his guidance, his love. And we need that voice to be turned up and our flesh and the world to be turned right down. Is that saying, I always find myself saying, you're making such a racket, I cannot hear myself think. Do you find yourself saying that sometimes? If you have kids, you probably say it. And I feel like it goes like this. The world is making such a racket, I cannot hear my spirit speak. The Lord loves that silence, that stillness, because I think it's actually that time where all that clutter and that noise just gets cleared out and we can actually hear him. It's so beautiful. And it brings me to the theme of today. It's daughter of a voice. Isn't that beautiful? I came across this word 
as I was studying out heeding and hearing. And I came across a Hebrew word called batkol. And so I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then I saw it meant daughter of a voice. I'm like, how could that possibly mean hearing, heeding? So I looked into it a little bit further. And daughter basically means the church, a vessel, a gathering. And the voice is Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit. But I want to break down each letter in the word bat kol for you because it's really, really beautiful and there's actually so much more depth and meaning to it. But it's actually the hands of God reaching down. That is daughter of a voice. It's God's hands reaching down to you. So the first letter is bet. It means a container, a gathering, a vessel, a house. The next letter is tav. It's the mark of the cross. It's Jesus. It's our salvation. Kaf. Kaf actually has two letters that actually make up the word kaf. It's zayin, which is holiness, and resh, which is reaching down. It's holiness transcending. The picture is a sun and a horizon. And the interesting thing about this letter, it's actually the letter that reaches down the lowest. It's the lowest letter reaching down reaching down to the lowest of lowest here on earth. And vav is the nail. It's a hook. It means a joining, a connecting heaven and earth. And then lamet, it's a staff, a rod, which is used to protect, protect, comfort, guide, lead, teach. A good shepherd is never without his staff. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are always together, intertwined. And so basically it says this. A vessel marked by the cross, joining heaven's holiness to earth through the Holy Spirit. That is what daughter of a voice is. And this is my prayer for you today, for this church, for this nation, that we will be daughters of a voice, that will heed the voice of the Holy Spirit and connect heaven's holiness, heaven's will, heaven's way, heaven's love for the people here on earth through us by the Holy Spirit. That is my prayer and that is daughter of a voice. So I want to read Matthew 5 verses 13. You are the salt of the earth, but salt loses its flavor. How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify God. That we can be his vessels here on earth. The people that encounter us won't glorify us. They'll glorify him because they see Jesus in us. They will see love. They will see peace. They will see joy in us. That is our heart. That is heaven coming to earth. It's peace, joy, and righteousness. When we have those things in us, it actually evokes almost a jealousy in other people going, I want that. I want that. It actually creates a thirst in other people. Let your life be so salted with Jesus, it creates a thirst. A thirst for Jesus. Blessed are those who thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Take up your crown and flow in your royal righteousness that has already been bestowed upon you. Walk in it. God showed me a vision one morning when I was getting ready, and I felt like I almost like saw through his eye view looking down, Eva's eye view. And I felt, I just sensed the love that he had for his children. He was looking down. But I all, all of a sudden had this sense that God was like looking, looking at his children that he loved. But like, it's like, where, who, where, whom, whom can I use? Whom can I send? Whom can I 
put my spirit and my will through to get my will be done here on earth? Whom can I send? Who will say, here I am, send me? I think it's actually one of the most selfless prayers you can pray because it's actually not your will. It's not what I want. It's not what you want in this world. It's not about the next house or the next car. It's, God, what is it you need to get done? I'll help you. I'll help you find your children that don't know you yet. Your children that are wandering and lost, I'll help you. I'll go, God. And the reason why I sensed this was the scripture here. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. It's God is coming. <laughs> He's coming back. And that's awesome. We're to be like, yes, God. We're so excited, God. You're coming. That's what happens when you know you're righteous in Christ Jesus. That's what happens when you know how much he loves you. When you sin under a grace message week after week in church and you let it wash over you, it creates that excitement. Like you cannot wait for God to come. You can't wait to be in his presence every day, all day. No more sickness, no more pain, no more strife. I can't wait. And it reminds me of my kids when I read this scripture. It's like when my, it's, it's Jonathan or Joel's birthday. They literally cannot sleep. They cannot stop talking about their birthday present that they're going to get that is a month away. Every single day. And it's that excitement in us that starts to stir in us. Can't wait, God. Can't stop talking about it, God. You're coming for us. You're coming for your bride. And he's coming, and he's coming soon. And that's why, heeding his voice, hearing him, hearing what he needs to be done here on earth is important because we're going home, and we need to take everyone with us. Amen? Not just us. We don't just receive. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're receiving this grace. We're receiving this truth. It can't just stay at us. It has to go forth. This presence that we encountered here this morning, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit and His presence and His glory and His healing in this place this morning, oh, it's good. But it can't just be for us. I want everyone to encounter that. Every single person I know, every single person I meet, I want them to know the presence of God. I want them to know they are righteous in Christ Jesus. But it's going to take, in a sense, a revival, a sense of us going, yes, God, here I am, God, I'll go. I'll bring people to your storehouse. I'll bring people to the church. I'll go and get them, God. Some of you might be sitting here, well, you don't know my life, and you don't know where I come from, and I'm a shy person, and... I have a history, I'm not the best example, um, you can think of a million excuses, that's okay, because guess what, God doesn't see that, he sees the son Jesus, when he looks at you, this is what God showed me, and I'm going to share what God showed me for me, and I pray that it blesses you, but one morning in worship, God showed me three pictures of things I kind of remember, but I'm like, I kind of don't want to remember those things because they weren't my best days. My, the day maybe you want to call like I sinned the most, I felt the most condemned, the most unworthy. And I'm like, oh. But immediately he's like, I didn't see that. When I looked down, I saw the calling on your life. I saw the gifting, the pearl, the, the beauty I placed inside of you. Even when you were in those moments of your sin, of your worst sin, of your worst day, do you know that he didn't see that? He saw my beautiful daughter 
who I've called and I've appointed for such a time as this. He sees his son, Jesus. That's what he sees when he sees you. And he sees everything he's given you. God declares a thing before it's reality. You might not even see it yet on yourself. And I don't care how old you are. You could be 13. You could be 90 years old. God, if you're here and you're breathing, God's still going to use you. God is going to use you if there's air in your lungs and you're breathing and you're alive, if you will let him. Here I am, God. Use me. Whatever it is. Don't worry about the what. Forget about the what. Then we get so focused. Then I find myself going, oh God, I've got to serve you. I've got to, I've got to work for you, God. I've got to get out there. Forget about the what, because then we get into that space. Eyes on self in a circle like God showed me in that picture in that vision, all he actually wants is his children to look up and go, I'll go, God. Doesn't matter what, I'll go, God. It's selfless. It is a selfless prayer. And our flesh has to submit to that. If you consider yourself to be wise and one who understands the ways of God, advertise it with beautiful, a fruitful life guided by wisdom and gentleness. Never brag or boast about what you've done or you'll prove to be truly wise in yourself. But there is bitter jealousy. But if there is bitter jealousy, comparison and competition hiding your heart, don't deny it or try to compensate for it. For that has nothing to do with God's heavenly wisdom. But can best be described as the wisdom of the world. So wherever jealousy selfishness are uncovered, you will also find troubles in every kind of meanness. I think that's often why we end up having strife in our life and and issues with people. But the wisdom from above is always pure and filled with peace. It's considerate, it's teachable, it's filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. It always bears the fruitful harvest of righteousness. Good seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. Don't chase the better life. Go after the blessed life that God has predestined and given you already. You just have to step into it and walk in it. Don't get distracted by what the world is saying you must look like or be like or have. The world must submit and God's word must go forth. And you literally sometimes have to get that flesh, get that world behind you and under your feet so that the spirit of God can flow through you, so that you can reign in life for how God has predestined and planned for you to reign here on earth with heavenly wisdom. There can often be two voices. The flesh has a voice too in us. And it's really easy to know when it's the flesh. It's because it starts with you. What am I going to do, God? Oh, oh. Comparison. And it ends with you. That's the flesh. But when it's God, it starts that he sees something in you, that he's placed something in you. You might not even know about it. You might not even know it yet. And it ends with giving him glory. That's God's voice. That's the peace of God. That's the voice that you're to listen to. It always ends with God. It always brings him glory. Okay. So then prepare your hearts and minds for action. Stay alert and fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that is coming to you. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, a greater measure will be released to you as God's obedient children. Don't shape your lives by the desires you followed when you didn't know any better. Instead, shape your lives according to the Holy One who's called you For it says, you are holy, for 
I am holy. You are holy for I am holy. That's what grace does. That's not what law does. We can never keep the law. But grace actually evokes a holiness in us. We actually become like Jesus. We start to think like Jesus. We start to see like Jesus. Be holy for I'm holy. The more you're in his presence and you're receiving his love and his grace, you can't help but to actually reflect him and be like him. It doesn't make you sin, knowing that his grace covers every shame and every failing and every thing that you missed. It doesn't make you want to do that more. It wants you to be better. It wants you to be like him. It wants you to, you want to be holy. Being occupied with the finished work, it produces joy in our lives. It produces joy. Hebrews 13, verse, verse 13. So we must arise and join him outside the religious walls and bear his disgrace. For we have no city here on earth to be our permanent home. But we seek the city that is destined to come. So we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus. We offer up to God a steady stream of praise. These are the lambs we offer from our lips that celebrate his name. We will show mercy to the poor and not miss an opportunity to do acts of kindness for others. For these are the true sacrifices that God actually delights in, that he is well pleased in. And I want us to just think about that for a moment, just the word praise. I really think it is such a key, key, key thing in our walk with God. Praise. When you get grace and that you realize that veil has been torn and you have that direct access to Jesus, that direct access into the holiest of holies that we experienced this morning in his presence, when you encounter him and his presence is heavy and his glory is surrounding you, there's no lack in that. And do you know that that is with you all the time? He is with you all the time. But it's so funny that sometimes we have to get into this mode where we've got to beg God, beg him for that breakthrough. Beg him. God, God, if not getting my breakthrough, I better pray about it again. Like he didn't hear you. He knows everything in your heart. Even those deepest desires in your heart that you've never even said. He knows because he made you. <laughs> but when you're in that atmosphere of glory, of presence, I find myself, I cannot but thank him. Because you just have this sense that you're so fully provided for. Nothing missing, nothing broken in his presence. That's actually how we're to live our lives out every day. Revelation of his finished work and thanking him. Knowing that he's with you, that you're in the Holy of Holies with him. Wherever you go, you have direct access. He is living in you. He is speaking through you. You're provided for. He will never withhold anything from his children that he loves. But he wants you to have the blessed life. He wants you to hear him. He wants to guide you. He wants to protect you because you're his kids. Praise actually means casting your cares onto him. When you give thanks, and sometimes you might not even be feeling like saying, thank you, God. There might be chaos going on around you. You might have had a terrible day. There might be issues in your family. But when you start to thank him because of what Jesus has done, he doesn't have to die on the cross again. He's already done it. And when you lift that up and you lift up the finished work, you can't help but thank him. It might look and feel like you shouldn't be thanking him, but when you thank him, you're lifting it up, you're casting your cares without even realizing it. There's breakthrough in that. And so often we're sitting on the other side like, God, <laughs> help God, where are you, God? Panic stations. Just lift up the finished work and thank him. There is breakthrough there. I'm telling you now this morning, there is breakthrough there. 
stop focusing on the problem, stop focusing on the lack, start focusing on the finished work, and start praising him. Your needs are met there, like Sarah. She waited so long for a baby, I, I think she was probably even pleading with God for a child. And then she took it into her own hands, I better make this happen. Got an Ishmael. And then she encountered grace. And God added grace to her name. And then God said, I'm going to bless you with a child. And then she laughed and said, well, I have pleasure in my old age. That's the key. Enjoy him. No matter what's going on around you, we live in a world that is chaotic and noisy, and it's probably not going to change. So let's start stepping into his presence, into his peace, and pushing those things out and turning up the things of God, his values, his heart for you. It's peace, it's righteousness, it's joy through the Holy Spirit. The more we praise, every, all the issues diminish. The more you try for result, no enjoyment. Do you think God wants you not to enjoy your life? Not to enjoy your kids, not to enjoy your family, not to enjoy work, not to enjoy serving in church? We're missing it then. He wants us to have fun. He wants to have fun, pleasure in Him. Have that peace, that overwhelming joy that nothing in the world can bring. He wants that for you. Praise is your spiritual weapon. So, don't pout, just praise. Turn to the girl beside you and say, don't pout, just praise. And turn to the other girl. Don't pout, just praise. Hallelujah. We're going to praise you, Jesus until we see that healing, until we see that breakthrough, because it's done, it's finished, it's ours, we are provided for fully by the finished work on the cross. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So don't focus on the what. Focus on the why. He will direct you. He'll guide you. He'll teach you. He'll speak to you. He'll protect you. Oh, and it's glorious. And I really believe there is a greater glory coming on this earth like we've never seen before because of the time that we are living in. We are living in the end times. We're living in the third day, the 11th hour. It's us. And he says in his word, you're going to see miracles like you've never seen before. We are to be expectant for that. We are to be ready, ready to receive ready to go, ready to gather the people. Eternity's our home. Heaven's our home. This is a stopover. Like when you go down to Durban, you stop over at a petrol station, you get refueled and goodies and sweets. and That's what earth is like. It's our stopover. Don't live like this is eternity. Yeah, it's not. It's merely a stopover, and it's merely to gather the people that we need to bring with us. It's merely to help people encounter Jesus and to bring heaven here on earth through the Holy Spirit. We can show people Jesus through the Holy Spirit living in us and directing us and speaking to us. And God is saying, I need my children to hear. I need my children to see Jesus in you. Sometimes, yes, we preach grace here at church. But what happens to all the people that are outside the walls of church that would never normally walk through the walls or the doors of church? What about them? That's you. Your sphere, your workplace, your family, even the stranger you encounter, that might be the Jesus they experience first. And then you gather them and you bring them to the storehouse. I really believe God is wanting to mobilize people to say, go, I'll anoint you, I'll appoint you, I'll give you everything you need. My spirit will flow through you like beautiful living waters. If you'll just say, yes, God, here I am, God. 
Use me, God.